Hard News tonight, how the tabloid papers make it hard to be glad to be gay. Every picture tells a story, but some pictures tell a lie. And the sweet and sour saga of the press junket of the year. Hello. Imagine my surprise when I opened my son on Wednesday to read Lower Age of Gay Consent. Why do gay men have to wait until they are 21? Had the son suffered a sudden rush of blood to the head? Is this the paper that only the other day, pondering the ethical and moral dimensions of the issue, declared... Madness. Sexual deviancy is not just a moral issue. To encourage it among youngsters in the age of AIDS is self-destructive madness. So what about that first headline? Well, it was just Ken Livingston, whose bizarre role as a maverick Sun columnist provides such a revealing counterpoint to the rest of the paper. The tabloid papers have never exactly championed the cause of homosexual rights. Gays are at worst an object of derision, prejudice and hostility, at best a source of prurient sexual curiosity. Just take today's Sunday Mirror. Gay sex orgy at the palace. World exclusive. Sarah Spiller now reports on the impact of the press on the gay community. Brighton, a seaside resort where ordinary people live ordinary lives, enjoying the first sunny days of summer. But those who are part of all this and who are gay claim the very ordinariness of their existence is constantly being brought into question. They blame a hostile press, a complaint echoed throughout Britain's gay community. The very ordinariness that we are you know, part of the community here very accepted by the majority of people, never gets public airing. They think because we're gay, because we, we, people can't see we're gay, they can say anything they like about us, anything negative. We need to move beyond the victim status. A memorial gathering this week, part of Brighton's Gay Pride Festival. For many here, the right to be gay means the right to be heard, to mourn and to celebrate. But people complain that when they do anything positive, it only attracts negative headlines. For the local paper, the Evening Argus, this gay pride festival meant rouse and controversy. Councils £5,000 for gay festival. Gay fury as park parade bites dust. Lesbians and gay men are a huge community in Brighton. It's one of the largest lesbian and gay communities in Europe. And we pay 20% of the taxes. Now, the Argus doesn't report that when it reports £5,000 have been paid from the council. But I come back to news values. We have to report the news. That, that's, that's what we're in the business of doing. Ordinary, it, it's a harsh fact of life in newspapers that very often ordinary things don't make the news. Um, and I think we would be criticised for singling gay people out for doing particular things that they consider very ordinary. This award-winning play, The Ice Pick, is also part of the festival. It played to full houses for three weeks on the Edinburgh Fringe. This is the publicity photograph of the play. And this is the headline in the local free sheet, The Leader, put beside the photo. Do you find this photo offensive? The story concerned an apparent row printers had had about producing the photo, despite the fact that they went ahead and printed it. Most of the piece is given over to the row, Tucked away at the bottom is a tiny quote from a festival organiser. I think I would like to have put a couple more paragraphs in to just balance it out a little bit more. So that's a fair criticism. What I was trying to do is to explain the context of the disagreement with the printers um, because the, the motivating force for the story was to say, this row has developed. Um, we'd now like to say, well, do you believe it's a justifiable complaint? But gay people who support events like this festival here in Brighton have a more serious complaint about negative images and negative copy in the newspapers. They claim such stories can do irreparable damage to people's lives, forcing young people in particular to stay in the closet and creating a hostile environment which can lead to abuse and even physical attacks. Two weeks ago, this Brighton Centre for Gay and Lesbian People was attacked part of a constant threat of abuse and violence, which many here maintain they live with day to day. But whilst gay bashing can be a source of anxiety here, for the news of the world, it's all a bit of a joke. 
Queer on the pier. Brighton plays host to 11-day gay bash. They can say, oh, it was a slip of the tongue or whatever, but I think it's just an invitation to people to come and attack our events. Absolutely, there should be freedom of the press, and yes, they do disapprove, but there isn't freedom of the press for us. Newspapers are at their most strident when it comes to young people. During the election campaign, four national newspapers ran a story claiming youngsters here at a London girls' school had had lessons in lesbian love. Instead of maths, a lesson in lesbianism. Classroom lessons in how to be a lesbian. The girls, as young as 14, have been shown videos of women having sex. I just, I, I kind of postponed it. This is the video, a 20-minute film of youngsters talking about being gay and the difficulties they faced. The Daily Express was forced to apologise. In an editorial, The Sun asked, What are they trying to do? Build a gay world? Pupils at the school responded with a letter. We are unhappy that the media has twisted a simple discussion of relationships to sound like some sex orgy. The way the story was reported also came under fire in that bastion of the establishment, the Daily Telegraph, in a column by journalist Kate Saunders. You puff it up into um, storm over gay film, fury over gay film, parents outrage, and, and you've got a story, but you've got a story which is slanted very definitely in the wrong direction and does not represent the feelings of the majority in the case. So that has to be irresponsible reporting. How they can justify this interest, I don't know. I think that these papers are very much based on fantasy and reassurance, i.e. that they, they know that they're aiming, or they think they're aiming, for people who are perhaps rather bigoted in this respect, and want to reassure them that, yes, indeed, you know, um, yes, lesbians are perverts, just as you thought. Inaccurate, irresponsible reporting is bad for readers of all ages, but if you're young, isolated and gay, it can have serious consequences. A recent Health Education Authority survey found only 18% of teenagers receive education about homosexuality. With information in scarce supply, newspapers play a key role. It's important that it needs to be put across to maybe the young people who are reading it, that you don't have to go off and slit your wrists if you're lesbian or gay, because you, you can live and have a nice life. But like in the press, it's all negative about us and we deserve to have some columns of space. And, and so I think that, yeah, both sides should be heard. It's like they're betrayed, you know, because they're meant to write the truth and they don't. And so if someone's young, they're reading it, they're going to think, oh, this is the truth. And oh my God, how can I be this? It's because we're not visible, they think we don't exist, and we don't buy newspapers, but we do. We do buy the sun, well, gag. We do buy the sun, we do buy the mirror, you know? You should cater to that. Youngsters take their cue from adults in public life, but unless something changes, they will continue to read about gay people as figures of fun and ridicule. Limp arm of the law. There's a touch of pink in the thin blue line as pansy policemen come out of the closet. This Daily Star story concerns an association for gay and lesbian police officers. Mark Burke helped set up the association. A number of papers approached him with a view to exposing policemen and women. Last winter, the group met for a boat trip on the Thames. But officers soon found themselves ambushed by reporters and photographers from the Sunday Mirror. It's a fair cop, love. Fun on the river for the boys in pink. Some officers had not come out and were frightened of being identified, yet the paper still published this picture. It's outrageous. I don't understand what they hope to achieve with it, really. It just seems to do nothing uh, but, but damage people. There are a number of people on that boat who were not only not out to work, but were not out to their families either. Um, one of the pieces is mother's in her 70s, and if she had, you know, discovered her son splashed all over the pages of a Sunday tabloid, I think would have made life very difficult for him and for her. Those like filmmaker Derek Jarman, who speak out on gay rights, have come to expect adverse coverage. He recently refused an award from the London Evening Standard in protest at the way they wrote about gay issues. And he's furious at the stance of The Guardian during a recent interview about his films and life. He believes anti-gay attitudes are endemic in newspapers.
It would be totally unacceptable to talk about racial minorities, black people or Jews in the way that uh, gay people are talked about. You could always sell things with a bit of hatred. And I have to say that I think it's, that's one of the reasons, because usually when you meet the individuals concerned, they actually seem to be reasonable, but then they go back and they write these extraordinary things. I think there's a vast amount of ignorance about uh, uh, you know, gay men and lesbian, lesbian women lives. I mean, I think people just don't understand it. But whilst campaigners insist on a right to be heard and heard fairly, others in positions of influence still challenge people's right to be gay and to have homosexual relationships. One such group is the Conservative Family Campaign, quoted frequently in the papers. One of their supporters is Christopher Monckton, an influential leader writer on the London Evening Standard. He believes homosexuality is wrong and that there should be no positive reporting of gay issues. The way I think it should be approached by, let us say, leader writers like me, is that rather than finding excuses for saying, ya boo, down with homosexuality, which is rather negative, if you like, though uh, it's what I believe. My duty as a leader writer is to be less, if you like, ungenerous than that, and to promote, in the other direction, the positive values of what I would regard as normal family life. Newspaper stories about gay issues affect gay people in all walks of life, from school children to those in public positions. But the fear of exposure of a bad press is particularly acute here at Westminster, and the damage insensitive reporting can do to political figures can have far-reaching consequences. Politicians are terrified of uh, reporting. They're terrified not just of the reporting, but obviously of the effect that the reporting will have on their constituents, their constituency associations, and on the chief whip and their colleagues in the House. The newspapers are the lightning rod for that. They convey the news. The news the politician knows will be unwelcome. Therefore, the politicians don't want the news to be published. When the News of the World ran, I knew in my heart of hearts that it was all over uh, one hour after the general election had been called, because that's when the uh, News of the World rang up. Jonathan Wallace was the Liberal Democrat candidate for Hexham in the last election. The News of the World discovered he was gay in the aftermath of a wholly separate story concerning Alan Amos, Hexham's Conservative MP. To preempt the news of the world, Wallace rang the local paper, the journal, and confirmed that he was gay. The nationals picked the story up and turned it into a piece of cheap sensationalism. Hold on to your seat. New gay shock in Pole Scandal Town. And the journal's sister paper, The Chronicle, piled in to exploit the coverage with this advertisement. Where we lead, others follow. The journal, always first in the northeast. This was set alongside election news. The editor of Newcastle's journal newspaper, Neil Fowler, defends the advertisement. We've done that advert hundreds of times before, and it was just on the occasion that the Jonathan Wallace was another story. But it was a story that was an issue because the Nationals ran the story, so it was justifiable. It's a story. Um, we're in the, uh, my aim as editing the journal is to sell as many newspapers as possible um, in our market. If the Amos scandal hadn't taken place, then I wouldn't have had to declare my sexuality and I could have continued my political career as normal. But the situation was quite the reverse. The Amos story came out and I got caught in the fallout. And that had some quite serious consequences, both for my life, the family's life, and for politics out here in Hexham. From politicians to police officers, teenagers to artists, Gay people live ordinary lives and do ordinary jobs. They just want to be seen as ordinary people. I, I think it's the last respectable prejudice. It's like you can say whatever you like about lesbian and gay people because it's some, in some way respectable. Sarah Spiller reporting.